Hey everybody! Today's topic will be let's talk about protection that you have to do with your wind and solar. And let's start with solar. This guy is a little bit noisy, so sorry for this, but it is actively producing and actively selling power back to the grid, so yeah, that's what he's basically doing. And it has an integrated DC switch. That's very convenient because you can turn it off and then do whatever uh, manipulations you need with, the, with your DC, uh, with your panels, actually. Uh, and, oh, it's good. Uh, it, 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 the coolers went off, so it, it's more handy to talk now. But, in general, there are like several levels of protection you may use on your panels, on your solar panels, specifically on strings. So I have the strings so with 6, 7 and 10, uh, all of them going into this input 6, 7 and 10. Uh, don't worry, I know that normally you have to do once they both go into the same MPPT, they have to be equal, but no worries, MPPT works absolutely perfectly fine and it's absolutely okay to use only one panel difference. I mean, the trouble would have been if I would use like 5 and 10, that would be absolute nonsense, that cannot be done, but 6, 7 or 8, 9, 9, 10, absolutely okay, no, no, no worries. The only thing you have to account, uh, account for is the values that are allowed for uh, the PV input and input current, so that's what you have to think about and not to over, over, over go with the stated value. So, the first level of the protection that you may have is no protection, right? Basically, if you have one panel, two panels, you don't even think about doing some protection for it. But in general, if you have something more than four or five, you are starting to think to add this kind of uh, fuses. So, the fuse is actually technically a switch as well, however, please be advised that you do not, uh, it is not recommended to basically use it as a switch uh, if it is under load. So, if you have like uh, the switch like this, turn it off first and then go with the fuses and then do, and then do whatever maintenance you want to do on, the, on your solar panels if you need some, but basically there is no maintenance, but if you need to, uh, here is how you go. However, if you don't have this kind of switch or or any similar, any additional, any different, like it can be, it technically can be a switch like this, but uh, in any case, if you don't have it and you have this fuse, just do it quickly. Because why so? Because uh, there is generally a high voltage and you may capture, um, you, may ca you, may, you may get a fire. Uh, so that's that's really not recommended to use it. Then, level number, what is this level? That was level number two. This will be level number three. Uh, for each uh, array of solar panels, you also have to put in set, uh, not only the fuses, but also the light and surge protection. Uh, because they work in different modes and for different situations. Uh, this one will also technically broke once there is a lightning, but uh, this one will never protect you from any standard uh, issue or fire, whatever. Uh, this one will. Uh, what next? If you have the hybrid system, hybrid inverter, for example, that can also, or, or autonomous inverter that cannot sell back to the grid, but just like takes the power from the grid, like here, it may take from the grid and then to the load if, if the sun is not enough. In my case, it's selling back to the grid something. Uh, but in case something is going wrong with the inverter itself, you have to think about bypass. And I have this bypass, so for example, I need to do any technical maintenance on uh, this guy specifically to reconnect, to add the battery, to change the battery, whatever. Um, I just like switch it back to go directly from the grid. So all the house will not be left without power. Once I'm doing maintenance, I will just uh, switch off uh, this guy and that's it. And I will be absolutely happy to proceed with whatever maintenance I need to do. And of course, uh, there, there are additional two switches. The one is for in and the one is for out. Uh, these others, don't ask me what, 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 are, what, what are these about. It's uh, complicated stuff, uh, not at this moment. So just like bear in mind, you have to have a switch for, for in, you have to have a switch for out, you have to have a bypass. And of course, if you were speaking about specifically PVs, then this is really required. Each PV has to have its own set of uh, like security measures. And there is number four security level that can be done. It can be partially seen here. You see this uh, this thing aluminum, uh, this thin aluminum line going down the drain drain pipe. 
uh, it's a lightning protection which is passive and let's go and show you how it looks like but first let's go to the to the grid tie invert and let me show you what's the difference with there because this this is this, uh, this protection relates to autonomous or hybrid inverters and with grid inverters it's a little bit different so here in the garage I have the grid tie inverter which works with uh, this is 20 20 kilowatt Huawei which works with 30 kilowatts of panels. Apps works absolutely perfectly, absolutely fine. Uh, and here is the difference thing. It doesn't have any DC switch, right? So let me show you from all the sides. It doesn't have any DC switch on it, right? But it does have the like standard AC switch together with this additional protection from the, uh, I don't know. It's it's a kind of a differential switch, but it's a little bit it works a little bit differently, but it's kind of uh, like that. Uh, and uh, the difference is it doesn't have any DC switch, as I said, but it does have all the same. It does have the PV fuse. It has the lightness surge protection for uh, all the um, all, 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 all the all the arrays. And if you need to do anything any maintenance on in this case, you switch off the, the whole inverter first and then just like switch off the fuses and do whatever maintenance you need. I've been doing this already in this manner uh, while I was adding some panels to the arrays number one and two. Uh, it was in October and yeah, that's the procedure basically to follow, switch it off here, switch off the fuses and that's it. And then do the reverse once to launch the, the machine to start working. And uh, that's the only difference it has. Uh, so let's go and check how the Lightning protection specifically works with the arrays uh, of solar panels. And if we are talking about lightning protection, we have to consider first maybe the wind turbine protection, because the only thing you can do here, aside of the uh, lightning surge protection as well, is also uh, making sure that the steel construction you have here is also connected to the ground. That's the only thing you have to do. Uh, that the tower is connected to the ground and that's basically it. Uh, nothing else you can add specifically. Same with the constructions that you have on your like land or property which are so-called ground belt or uh, and which are not roof mounted. Uh, specifically all those poles, heavy poles and there are a lot of them, they are going 1.2 I think meters down uh, they are concreted, of course, and uh, the only thing you need is basically to add this kind of uh, aluminum pole, which is, in my case, four meter high, maybe five or six would be slightly better, because uh, after I added several panels, I added three, uh, it, it became too short, because generally, how does this thing work? Uh, draw a cone with 45 grad tilt uh, down and this is the area it protects you from the lighting that come, that, that, that's coming in and as you may guess uh, the distance is quite a little bit too long so maybe a couple of panels are not covered with this so technically i need to add to add more of them but uh, i think for this time it's uh, probably more than enough at this moment and very easy very simple you just connect it to the to the whole construction because because it's metal it's it's natural uh, you you have the natural grounding here and you don't need anything else additionally so that's that's how you do it uh, on the house you do it a little bit differently as you may see there are also several uh, specifically two you may see here right and they have to be connected to both uh, to, to the roof because this is metal roof in my case and they have to be connected also to the strings and each string has to go to the each angle and specifically it has to have i don't know if you if you are able to see the small maybe 30 centimeter uh thing here and here uh, but i definitely know that you will be able to locate it here because it's much closer so yeah there you go so this small one and like it unites, it connects all the all all the uh, all those poles with, with with all those small small hinges. And uh, how does it go down? You have to just make several uh, like roads roads for it to go down, like like here, and then technically move it away and a little bit on the ground, a meter or a meter and, and a half, or maybe two meters will be more than enough. And then three meters down, specific groundings uh, structure, and that's it. 
that's that's all you have to do but uh, the, the more you have you, you don't have to like leave only one you have to have several of them at least two four better so on the house i have four and on the garage i have two they are on on, on, on that side and that's basically it so there is nothing else additionally that you have to think about lightning protection why did i do this in my case because I am in an open field and uh, I don't have anything else and my building is quite high in the area so technically it may attract something and for a lightning it's very like enough to strike only once that's that's the reason why it is done right um, there are several ways to do this as well some may tell you that you have to also like unite the whole the whole building you have to build the whole how to say uh, contour that's a French word I don't know the English uh, uh, equivalent of it, but in, in any way, in, in, in any case, the same thing that you basically do for your uh, transformation transformation station uh, uh, there on the ground, they, they generally build this uh, big contour uh, down and, and, and giving you the natural and absolutely perfect earth grounding. So that's the same that you have to do in this case, but no, it's not necessary. So if you have the, the specific several uh things that that go down and then they are buried to the ground like three meters no that's that's something that will just only like cost you a lot of money but will not do a lot of stuff for, for this if you have lightning surge protections and of course this thing also has them so here are they one two three uh for for the phases right so that's that's what you generally have to think about and yeah that's it so thanks for watching and See you later. Now you know how to do the protection of all your solar panels.